welcome to In Focus. I'm your host, Yesenia Tavares. Today, more and more young girls and women are entering the world of sports, a field that was once dominated by men. Speak English 5 and Sports Communication Group is an organization, a company that is shedding positive light on women in professional sports. And they're having an event here at the 76ers Fieldhouse that's going to not only mentor, but speak to our women, men, and young girls and boys right here in the city of Wilmington. Joining us right now to tell us a little bit about that and more is Gisette Lane English and Joe Richmond. Welcome to the show. Thank you. How are you? Nice. <laughs> Powerful partnership here today. Yes, it is. <laughs> and with the world we're living in, who doesn't love to talk about sports? Right. <laughs> All day long, yes. I can. Yes. Right. <laughs> I can say, at least in your field, there's never a boring day. No. No. Never. No. Nope. Never. Definitely a lifestyle. So. Yes. Mm -hmm. So before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about who you are so the community can know a little bit about Gisette and Joe and for those who don't know the roles that you play with within your uh, different organizations. Just tell us a little bit about who you are. Okay, I am Gisette. Um, my son is a pro. Um, he went to Iona up in New York. Um, I've been involved in pro sports for many, many years. My ex used to play pro. He's a retired uh, professional basketball player. And um, I started the company with my daughter. She's my partner. She's the CFO of Speak English 5. And we're published authors. We have a radio segment and um, a sports column. So that's pretty much um, what we do, we highlight women inside professional sports. Wonderful. And Joe? Wow. Well, you know, I, I was raised as a little one. No. <laughs> right, right. I was going to say, it probably started no. around the womb. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I came here like 20 something years ago. My wife wanted to come here. And um, I love Delaware. And, um, you know, I, I come from Philly. I went to South Philly High School. I coached high school basketball. Um, my family's just been a basketball family. I'm the youngest of seven. Yeah. And um, uh, my brother, Big Mike, uh, played at UTEP and got drafted by the Dallas Mavericks. So I've always been around basketball. Um, I love what I do. Um, I've done youth programs. Um, I've owned minor league basketball teams, men and women. Um, I've been overseas. I like, I've, I've toured with the world famous Harlem Globetrotters. So I like to brag that I've been to all 50 states twice mm -hmm. and over 35 mm -hmm. countries. Mm -hmm. So That's you name it, I've done it in this game and um, it's just been a blessing ever since. And let's talk about that. They both of you actually had that opportunity to travel overseas mm -hmm. uh, because of professional basketball. What was that like for you and your journey? Well, for me, it was heavenly. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I, yes, I'm from right here from Wilmington. Since he's bragging, he's from Philly. Let me brag it. I'm, from, I'm homegrown. I'm from right here. So. Born and raised. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, I have the privilege to live in Europe for off and on for 10 years um, in Italy, France, Spain, Greece, Istanbul, Turkey. So I lived a lot of, in France. So I lived a lot of places in Europe. Um, got to experience many, many different cultures. Um, I love to eat, and the food is, is splendid over there, and the fashion and style, everything. I just loved everything about the culture. And I have three children, and all of them were able to have that same experience. My two older children were able to go to school over there. So mm -hmm. um, I love, love Europe, love overseas. And, and my oldest son has played over there as well now. So. And what part of Wilmington are you from, Gisette? I'm from the West Side. West Side. Yes. So for all yes. those young girls, check them for weapons. I'm from the West Side. She's still like, oh, don't act right? like you. Know. The West Side. Yes. All right. So for those like young girls and even young boys who like never been outside of West Side, West mm -hmm. Center, uh, the right. one Hicks Community Center, mm -hmm. what could I grew you? Up yeah, I yes. That, yeah, went to day camp there. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. I was a camp counselor there for oh, a few years. Okay. So it's, it's good to see like someone who has gone through the journey mm -hmm. of living there, homegrown, mm -hmm. going to school here, and then actually experiencing life overseas. Right. So for one who's never even stepped out of Wilmington, mm -hmm. what, what could you share with them? Broaden your horizon, you know, although, you know, we love our city, our hometown, but there's more to life than your surroundings. And I suggest that you um, broaden your horizon. And if you can't travel, just open up a book. You know, if people still read hard books, I don't know, or right. go online or something, <laughs> but just broaden your horizon because there's so much more to life and so much beauty, you know, to, to encompass and to, to, to be inspired from. So that's what I, that's what I suggest. Okay. Mm -hmm. And from the uh, born and raised in Philadelphia. <laughs> it, it, it's so funny, but I've been here 23 years now. My you know, kids grew up here. My oh, daughter went to Delaware school here. Yeah, I'm, yes, William Hicks is like my first home. 
Uh, you mm -hmm. know, Mr. Sheehy was there when yep. I first got there. <laughs> um, God rest so my, my man passed away. I can't think of his name. It escapes me right now. But all that is family over there. I've done so much in the William X. My Chris, minor league, Chris. Chris yes, yes, Chris passed. Mm -hmm. And uh, but they were all family. Miss Lorraine, all everybody mm -hmm. over there. So I mean, when I first came, me and my brother, when we started our nonprofit over there, and we played all our tryouts have been there. Mm -hmm. Even a lot of people don't know that. Even with the G League, with the Delaware Blue Coats, mm -hmm. the teams that we practice against, they practice at the William X. That's right. mm -hmm. That was one of the things that I wanted to bring back to the city before we even came there with the Phil House. Mm -hmm. We were still out at Bob, but we practiced at Hicks. And I wanted the kids to see that, and they opened up the doors, and the mm -hmm. kids were able to come and see uh, the teams from Toronto, the, 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 the Cavaliers G League teams, the Warriors G League team practiced there. Mm -hmm. So that's the one thing I love, and I love everything about Delaware. Ever mm -hmm. since I've been here, um, my, my wife, she's has since passed, but we, we when we first came, we just loved it here. So I'm I'm a Delawarean. Mm -hmm. I know Philly can say what they want. I love I love Philly too. But I, I, I love it here. I just love it here. I really do. And thank you so much for the both of you to shed some light on the William Hicks Anderson Community Center because for those who don't know, that is our city of Wilmington's only uh, sport, only place for kids to go to. It's our only community center mm -hmm. uh, where they can play these sports and, and get to learn these different. I mean, they even mm -hmm. boxing there. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I call it. It's almost like the New York City's Rucker Park. It's like mm -hmm. Philly's um, Baker League. Right. William Hicks is like um, hollow ground. Right, you don't do right. nothing dumb there. Mm -hmm. You know, don't you don't come yeah, exactly. there. You don't no disrespect, uh, yeah, no disrespect right. at the Hicks Center. Right. And that's what I love. And they and they treat everybody like human beings. Mm -hmm. That's right. And that's the one thing I love about it. And I still go over there today. Um, mm -hmm. We as the Blue Coats, we donate everything there. Water bottles. We've donated money. Mm -hmm. We've donated gear. We mm -hmm. we love it there. And that was before the Field House was even a, a concept mm -hmm. for us. That's we right. always had that relationship with the William Hicks Anderson Center. And I I even went back and taught an art program for the children in the community and it was we, we took an artist from each country where I lived. So that was my way to kind of broaden their horizon to teach through art. So we pick an Italian artist and then study him. We pick a you know, a Spanish artist from and then study him, like and a French artist. So that's how and then I would have them try to uh, paint one of their paintings, like reproduce it. So that's how I was able to kind of pull my experience overseas back to the west side and give that to to the kids so okay. I, I taught that program at the hicks center too for a while wonderful so. and mm -hmm. let's get into that uh your roles now you're the ambassador of blue coats you're representing because i know it's you and your daughter so you're mm -hmm. representing speak english five and yes. uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, your roles in what it is that you're doing with our community in regards to shedding light to uh, basketball. I know this is the only sport we're talking about, uh, but well, not for me. Regards, <laughs> I was going to say, but for you, <laughs> yeah, you worked at NFL, right. yep, WNBA. All the board. But, mm -hmm. Yeah, but how this came about was I wanted to do something, and everybody always comes to me with things for the young mm -hmm. men, and I do a thousand of events, and we do a thousand, but I wanted something that could speak to the young ladies, because I have three beautiful uh, daughters, and you know, and they and they came up under sports underneath me, but you know, they they carry themselves a certain way because that's the way their mothers wanted it. And by knowing um, Josette, I know she had an awesome program. Say, how can I make this happen? What can I do to be something different, right. something that was unique, not just a basketball camp or clinic for the mm -hmm. girls? I didn't want to make it basketball related. I wanted it to be at the field house, but I didn't want it to be a, to have the basketball connotation to it, so to mm -hmm. speak. Right. I just wanted something where the, the young lady can come in there, see it, but that would be the foundation because that's what shaped my life right. and then Josette just took it to another level with oh, this right. with this uh, females and phenoms uh, event that. yeah let's talk thank about you. that females and phenoms yeah, on so, July 25th you know we are phenoms right we are <laughs> just naturally right so I just wanted to let everybody know who's confused that females are phenoms yes. so our phenoms will be our mentees next week that's what we're speaking about and then I have a ton of my friends, I call them whips, women inside professional sports. So a ton of whips from all across the country are coming to Wilmington, Delaware to mentor yes. our young girls. And they and when I went to them, um, all of them whose schedules were free, you know, they all hopped right on it. So they're coming. It's about it's going to be about 25 of us in in that field house mentoring um, and the young girls. Why is it important to have this type of event here in the uh, in the city? I mean, I know we, we talked about the importance of sports, but now we're actually setting light on here where you're connecting people who are living this mm -hmm. to people who are aspiring to be in their place. Well, for me, um, you know, as the ambassador of basketball for the Blue Coats, I'm always in the community, whether from here down to Rehoboth. Mm -hmm. um, but Wilmington has always been that second home to me, whether it was Newcastle, anywhere. I just love. But the one thing I noticed is that 
our young ladies are because I like I said I'm with my daughter and I go to volleyball events I go to soccer events and our young ladies are doesn't have a lot to really look up to as far as being represented you know what I mean and I, you know I've, I've known like a Dawn Staley uh, that mm -hmm. played uh, at Temple South Carolina head coach women's head coach um, and then at, even at um, uh, Mount Pleasant High School their boys head coach is a, is a woman okay. and mm -hmm. I, I, I think we need to bring more of that to light mm -hmm. you know I I, I applaud what Deladon is doing in the WNBA mm -hmm. right. as representing us. Um, but when Gisette, it, when I could see with Gisette that 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 network that she had mm -hmm. of the different types of women, authors, yep. chefs, um, designers, mm -hmm. um, lawyers, I was like, wow, our young ladies need to see this. Mm -hmm. And that's what was important for me. And that's why this all really came about. Mm -hmm. And speak to us about your platform, what Speak English 5 actually really does. Um, well, we just provide a platform for women inside professional sports to share with the community what they do best, whatever that is. If they're attorneys, if they're artists, if they're actually the athlete, the WNBA player, or the professional boxer, you know, we want to we want to share with the community what they what they do, what they're best at, you know, because that's what girls I feel need to see. They need to be able to have role models like that before them to to pull them along, so they know that they can aspire to be great in life and they can reach their highest potential. Um, so that's what we do. We have a sports column in Copa Style Magazine. We have a radio segment. Um, and we're published authors, like I said. We have a book that we, my daughter and I co-authored that talks about all different aspects of what goes on inside oh, professional okay. sports. Yes, that's the book. And uh, that's proud of that cover. book. Yes, it is. <laughs> and we have, we have, we we took our interviews that we collected over three years of whips, and then we took the best parts of those interviews and just compiled them in a book, so everybody mm -hmm. can get a taste of the perspective of the, each woman that's featured. We have Lucille O'Neill in the book. We have um, Chastity Melvin in the book. We have a ton of women in that book that a lot of people that are involved in sports can identify with and will recognize um, each woman's name. However, if you're not in a sport, you will be able to identify just based off the, the topics that we talk about. You know, okay. they're raising athletes. Um, we talk about infidelity in marriage. We talk about okay. finances. We talk about the, the climate um, in the communities with the, with the issues between the police and our black men. We talk about all those things in that book. So anybody that reads that book, male or female, young girl, grown woman, little boy, grown man, will be able to take something from that book. So those are the things that, that we do. And, and I feel a sense of empowerment and uh, that cover spoke so loud to me because oh, it's you and your daughter. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah, I mean, yes. we do everything. That's my dog. We do everything. <laughs> that is, talk to us yes. about that. Talk oh. to shed some light on that because well, sometimes well, there can be like a little, you know, um, I could say negative energy between a mom and a, and a young girl growing yeah. up. And then, you know, what young girls are known to be in, independent before right. the sons, right? right? But here you're showing a powerful uh, connection here, a partnership in business and then and actually empowering other young women as well. Well, the, we started uh, because both I have two boys that are very, very good athletes. Um, they've been uh, gotten recognition for their athletic ability from the time they were oh, <laughs> since they were three. Both of my sons. So I just we used to watch my daughter, and I always felt like she didn't get the light that she deserved. You know, so okay. I watched her, and, and then I and I felt that kind of. I felt that same energy being the wife of a professional basketball player because it was always about his career, him, him, him. Even everything we did in our lives had to, you know, be circled around him because, you know, he was the breadwinner, the provider, so we had to go wherever he needed to go. Mm -hmm. So after she got older, um, I said, we need to do something because if we feel this way, we feel like we were not, not hindered a little bit, but just had to put our goals and aspirations on the back burner to support their uh, careers. We need to do something because there has to be other women that feel the same way. Okay. Now, she, my daughter and I have always gotten along. We never had any. She never gave me any trouble. And this is the truth. Never. You That's know, so wonderful. now I love her to death. Mm -hmm. I always have. And I don't know what she thinks about me or what she thought about <laughs> me when she, was, when she was a teenager. But we never butt right. heads. We, right. we just right. always were like years. best friends. You know, I, when, when I had her, I felt like God gave me my best friend. And that's just the honest truth. You know, so so we just work so well together like a well-oiled machine. So my shortcomings are her strengths and vice versa. So we're able to get so much done as a result of that. We are like a, if I could say it myself, we're like a power, powerful mother 
daughter team, and I know God had his hands in our relationship. That's wonderful. And so that's how that came about. All of our projects are we do together, all of them. So, that's wonderful. Yes. And the one, uh, and talking about partnership, the both of you guys actually started your, non your own nonprofit at one point. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about that. Well, I Am Focused Finance was my brother, Big Mike, and my friend of 20-something years, Tim Higgins, who's a uh, Philadelphia police officer and we just came together because we were doing all these basketball things so we wanted to co incorporate it and, and find a way to get it up but it got sparked from the Atlanta child murders are you remember that okay. mm -hmm. that's where it got mm -hmm. sparked so back then you had to get the Polaroid so we were putting the events together okay. and we were taking the pictures in the community of the youth the give to that grandmother, that wow, mother, so because what happened was when the police were going to the houses, they always had pictures of them with groups of people. That's amazing. Okay. So we had to find a way to get it. So we went and bought a backdrop and wow. we got, we went to the foundation of Atlanta and that's how we started our nonprofit. And we used sports as the way to draw them mm -hmm. in just so we can get the information. And the, the pamphlet had the actual picture of the child, height, weight, everything. Wow. So now if something ever happened to the child right. or they went missing, they right just went there. to the police, they could just give them that instead okay. of funneling through the drawer wow. with a bunch of pictures. Okay. And that's how we got started. We've been around for 20 years and we bought it to Delaware and we still do it today. We partnership with Walgreens, we've partnership with Walmart. We've done a, 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 a plethora of events just on that alone. That's okay. Amazing. And what's your take since you guys have both been so immersed into uh, sports on a professional level. Mm -hmm. What's your take on the disparity in pay when it comes to women in sports? We just had <laughs> our soccer <laughs> team. That. <laughs> that is a chapter in the book. Okay, that see, we got to get to that chapter. <laughs> yes, but we, you know, we just won the team. We won the World Cup here. So let's yes. talk about like the disparity. Like, what can women do? Because we have a lot of young girls who are looking to uh, be on a professional sports team like this or be a part of a WNBA. Uh, tennis. Uh, talk to us a little bit about how do you like. What's your view on that? Like, how do you well, approach that? My first of all, the community has to go out and support the women. The, the players get paid because the fans pay for the tickets, tickets to see and they're them. in the stands and they're buying all Supply of the, the the swag. <laughs> you know, so we that's the way you get them paid more. You go to the events and you support with their their efforts and what they're doing. And mm -hmm. you don't have to expect them to be wearing booty shorts when they're playing their sports. You you got you want to be able to see them in regular clothes like you see the other the, the male players and people mm -hmm. when they think of women a lot of times they associate us as sex symbols so if they don't see that when they're on the court then it's like I'm not I don't want to I don't want to go and that's mm -hmm. just my experience from interviewing people and that's their perspective on that but the way to get them paid is to support and go to the events and buy the tickets and then their salaries have to go up that's the okay. you know that's my take on it and it, and it is and I, I I'm an advocate of that I believe that I mean my daughter played volleyball it used to hurt my heart I would go to high school and it really wasn't packed mm -hmm. like these games are exciting you know right. what I mean mm -hmm. and um, when we my brother and I uh, we owned the lady destroyers we played our games at William Hicks mm -hmm. and I was like why you know the men would play and the gym would clear out when the women mm -hmm. would play Right. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. why wouldn't y'all stay? And, mm -hmm. you know, it's more great. And like she says, like supply and demand, if, they, if they're putting out their product, right. you want to go get it. You have to, and, and, it, and as those ticket sales go up, concessions go up, right. uh, jersey sales go up, mm -hmm. then the women got to get paid. Yep. But right. it's just something that's going on. And I'm glad that the women have started. I mean, you got companies that are now backing them. Mm -hmm. And it's going to think change the whole foundation and the landscape of how we go forward in the next five, ten years. Mm -hmm. I see it. Right. I see it they have the same skill sets, if not better. Better than some amazing, of these men who are playing in these amazing. professional sports. Mm -hmm. And you have women dunking in basketball now. Oh, yeah. Right. That's right. <laughs> they are. I can dunk. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Without those on? <laughs> I won't even attempt to dunk. <laughs> <laughs> so is that a reflection on our society? I mean, I know women have come a long way. Like I said earlier in my open, these are male-dominated sports at one mm -hmm. point. Um, but now they're at to an actual point where they can play these sports and get paid on a professional mm -hmm. level. Uh, but with the way our society, like you said, are not coming to these games, do you think we still have a long way to go? And if, if we do, like, what are some other ways? And, and your professional sport, you've been through the, through the journey yourself. Like, anything you could shed light on for us? Uh, I think uh, that... Uh, We've been taking baby steps. I think we need to take a leap now, you know, because um, times are changing. And uh, I just think that with platforms like this and you're talking about it, platforms like what I have and what Joe has and what he does, I think that will help um, urge people um, and, and help us make a change to benefit these women that are putting their heart and soul into these careers. And, and they love it just as much mm -hmm. as men love it. 
you know, and they're they're throwing their bodies on the floor and everything else to, you know, for for the for the game. And I just think that we owe it to them to honor that. That's right. Well, we have to do something because even with the world of technology, you don't even see it. You got fantasy football, fantasy mm-hmm. basketball, but it's for the men. You don't see it as much promoted for the women. Mm-hmm. NCAA time, men, dog, NCAA, match, March Madness mm-hmm. for the men. Mm-hmm. It's not that much of a hoopla for the women. Right. And it has to be created and it's there. We just got to find a way to tap into it and make it to where that level is. And we understand that it is about the men at times because of the mm-hmm. dominance and the strength right. and the jumping and the dunking. But you mm-hmm. get the same energy. You get the same yeah, passion, passion from the women yeah. and it just needs to be marketed or need to be put in the spotlight like my man say shine a light on it and it comes back even the females and phenoms this is an actual platform now for men to really come out and support. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's what we're yeah. looking for. When I put it on my timeline, mm-hmm. I'm asking all my basketball guys, that's all right. my coaches, that's yo, right. come out and let's show these women that we're behind them. Yep. As coaches, that's our actual responsibility, mm-hmm. not just for the young men, but we're mm-hmm. coaches of everybody. Mm-hmm. So this right. this event, when Gisette and I talked about it, that was the main thing that we wanted to hit home. Here's a real opportunity for right. the leaders, men leaders yeah. in mm-hmm. the community. They ain't got to be politicians or right. business people, anybody, mm-hmm. you want to be a leader, let's come and show these young ladies that we are behind you, yes. that there yes. is someone to talk to, right. that, yes. you know, there are men that are doing the right things right. and are working and there are other fathers mm-hmm. that, because I got some fathers that are bringing their daughters to the event. Mm-hmm. And that's the one beauty of the whole thing, because we need to bridge that gap. Mm-hmm. And we're and hoping that this event allows us to do and that. And that's perfect, Joe. That's why I admire this partnership. And I really wanted the both of you to be here to show that this can happen. And the mm-hmm. two of you are here to show that it can happen. Mm-hmm. We even have a, a group of panel. We have a panel discussion that's made up of male panelists for that perspective, so that to get the men to come out and let them know that it is for men, and also so that the mentees can get the the you know perspective of a man that's positive in the community. So we have a panel discussion that we're going to have too. That's you know features men. And let's talk about a little bit. We're going to talk about the event as as well, but females as phenoms. Like, mm-hmm. talk to us about that part. Like for those who don't understand or kind of ignorant to just that mm-hmm. phrase. Oh, this 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 is amazing. Talk about how to figure. You have like, a little history, like, right? You know, it's mean, amazing. You know, it really just, is. Just know, like I said before, the women, females are phenomenal, and we do exceptional things, and we are a part mm-hmm. of the fabric of sports. You know, mm-hmm. and, and nobody can deny that our essence is within the fabric of sports. That's so right. so I just want every I'm just using my connections in the pro sports world to come and try to benefit the community. But all of I feel like women are just phenomenal. You know, we're mm-hmm. just born that way. And it just we need somebody to harness our abilities and our gifts and pull that out of us. That's and that right. is the goal, you know, to have the, the mentees come our phenoms come and we remind them that they are phenomenal and mm-hmm. if nobody ever told them that they're going to hear it next week and they're going to hear it several times so when they walk out of that event mm-hmm. they're going to know that they're phenomenal and then and then hopefully we impact the trajectory of their lives and they feel like they can accomplish whatever they put their minds to so and that the beautiful the thing that i like that you shared earlier too is that not only are women phenomenal but they're on, they're phenomenal on and off the court they're yes, in leadership absolutely. positions and, as and, well you look at the Sixers, they just hired a female assistant coach. And that's going to be amazing to look at a Sixers game mm-hmm. and see that. Mm-hmm. And that's the one thing I loved about the partnership. Once we opened up the doors to the field house, the Buccini people, they opened up. I mean, listen, they, they gave us a bunch of concessions mm-hmm. to make this happen. I mean, there's a lot of uh, donated uh, uh, dollars. Yeah. Um, it, 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 this ain't cheap to put together. Right. That's right. And um, But a lot of people have come together to make this happen. Um, when I presented it to the Blue Coats, hey, what do we need to do? Mm-hmm. How we a part of this what do we need to make this happen um when we went to bpg sports okay no we can't pay that type of rent what can y'all do for us right. okay. a lot of things were gi- you know yep. concessions was given yes. and this is where people the, it has to start somewhere right. Right. they have to see value in this mm-hmm. and if nothing else when um Gisette came and presented herself and was professional <laughs> right as women we have to be professional as yeah. men and carry ourselves accordingly right. and she was she carried herself accordingly because this is going to be impactful mm-hmm. and um i know I'm, i got a lot of energy and i'm like because i'm really excited about it, I really am, and um, I'm I, and um, you know, Gisette, she's very humble. 
You know, and that's what I love about her. So I like to let me be the one to be loud and brag about it. <laughs> <laughs> because he, he's gonna shed the light on it. Yeah, yeah, because it, it is. And, and you know, I had a mother that was strong. You know, it was six boys. My mom held the house down because daddy was working somewhere else. That's and right. none of us are in jail. None of us are on drugs. And none of us are alcoholics. And we're all functioning good in society. All my brothers are. We're all living. Mm -hmm. And my, that's a testament to the strength of my mom. Because mm -hmm. dad was gone. So mommy, when mommy laid that law down, it was the law. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, uh, and she was phenomenal. And I wish she was here to see something of this magnitude and see that I'm a part of it. Mm -hmm. Because that's what I want. Because that was a strong mom. And when I met Josette years ago, yeah, my daughter ago. interned with her. Mm -hmm. Because she just was somebody that I looked up to. And I'm like, this is who I want my daughter to aspire to be Aww. like. Yeah. You got, you got to. So nice. You got to. And, and um, you know, when I first met you, and it's like, we have some real women. And I, I hope I don't go off track and say something wrong because you know everything is political correct mm -hmm. but there's a lot of enough negative women out there that's being sh light right. shit shown yes. on yes. and we need to get our women our young ladies so to speak right. down here and say hey no that's that's no, how they, that, they made those decisions after they were mm -hmm. past this that's we right. want you guys we want to give you a platform right now to show yourself and then hey maybe one day you might go we hope you don't but at least we're going to give you a foundation mm -hmm. okay. to say this is what you can look at and we're not saying anything negative about that mm -hmm. but we want to at least show them something positive that's first different. and put that in their head because social media is giving them all the dumbness mm -hmm. that's right that's right social media is giving them <laughs> all the dumbness now. and I really do <laughs> and I appreciate you bringing us on the show to really talk about it right. because we are very serious about what we're about to accomplish on the 25th. Yeah. And we only have a minute to leave uh, out of this segment, but I'm going to leave the floor for you, Gisette. Uh, what can one expect at this event and how can they uh, go ahead and purchase tickets? Okay, so the event is next Thursday, July the 25th at the 76ers Field House here in Wilmington. Um, the event will kick off at 530 with a pink carpet, VIP reception. Um, then we'll have our panel discussion our uh, mentorship piece will have and there's going to be vendors there and there's still opportunities to become a vendor if you like to um, and it's networking businesses local businesses everybody from the community it's for everyone it's not just for little girls and women it's for men it's for families um, it's a family oriented event to uplift and empower our girls in our community and give back and pour into them love on them and impact their lives uh, we're going to have women from the NBA, the NFL, the, the MLB, boxing, the WNBA, all across the board, whether they're the daughters, the athletes, the wives, the mothers. They're going to, we're going to have all kinds of women there in professional sports, and they're excited to come and pour into the girls in our community. Um, what else I missed, Joe? We've got some great um, giveaways. Yeah, we have. Yeah. <laughs> we still have sponsorships available. Well, yes. We're still accepting sponsorship because we want to make sure that we can give the best event that we can to these girls. We want to give them a lot of swag to take home with them. The mentorship piece that my daughter and I created, I got to pat myself on the back because it's the bomb. So please <laughs> come so that you can have the experience and and uh, meet and network with the women inside professional sports and the men that are going to be there. Wonderful. Well, thank mm -hmm. you so much, Joe and Gisette, for your time. Thank you for bringing this phenomenal event <laughs> yes. to the 76ers Field House. <laughs> thank you for having us. <laughs> and mm -hmm. we look forward to seeing it. Great. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> and on behalf of all of us here, the staff here at WITN 22, we like to take this opportunity to thank you for watching this episode of In Focus. I've been your host, Yesenia Tavares.